and welcome back everyone welcome back hope you enjoyed those stock tapes from times gone by i apologize for the extended break that we did have three duct tapes oh my god usually we only play like one or two but we went all the way for three this time because i needed some food i <laughs> oh god it is 10 p.m here 10 p.m in australia and um some uh, some breakfast would have been nice so, so i was able to grab a bite to eat ooh, and get ready here for the grand finale for the finale here for the semi-finals and the finals of the sparkling tuna cup number 32 week number 32 if those wondering this is an open tournament open to all regions of the world and organized and run and ran sorry by us here by us by here i'm gonna say by us here on the cranky ducklings let's go let's go uh, and we have our first semifinals before us we have eva versus mindo vk oh boy we were casting eva earlier today we were able to see his run all the way to the semifinals he brought down azura in a random versus Protoss match, I, it was crazy. I if you weren't here at the start of the day, um, <laughs> I, I, I guess you can watch it. It was uh, it was an interesting series. Eva played random. There was there was BC against Protoss, and Mech against Protoss, and I think you can imagine how that went. It did not go. <laughs> it did, did not go well. Oh god, it went back and forth, and in the end. In the ace match, Iba did roll his main race, and Iba was able to overcome Azura and advance on into the next round, where Iba did face off against a couple of other players as well. So, yeah, it's been a pretty uh, intense series. He went up against Nice. He went up against Nice in a really back-and-forth PVZ, and now he's up against MindoVK. And now I wonder, what's the matchup? Is Iba even playing Zerg? Is he playing random again? Is he playing Protoss? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I want to know. I <laughs> I saw Eba in the chat earlier, and I'm I'm concerned, Papi. I'm concerned. I don't know what I'm about to walk into, but yes, up next is going to be Eba versus MindoVK. For those wondering, the way that this works, as Eba was in the chat earlier, uh, this tournament was actually held a couple of days ago. <clears throat> this tournament was held on Sunday. On Sunday, and usually we cast our event live. But this Sunday, we were casting something else at the time. We were casting the Afrika TV Champions Cup, the Champions Cup. So as a result, we weren't able to cast both at the same time. It's a way we, we can't do it. Uh, but we didn't want to postpone the event. We've been holding it off for a while and we didn't want to hold off any longer. So we ran the event, we collected all the replays, and now we are here to cast it. We are here to bring it all to you live. Let's go. And we're diving into game. Number one. Is Eva Zerg? Is he Protoss? Is he Terran? Is he random? Oh, we have an answer. He is playing his main race. He is Zerg. Oh, let's go. And spawning in the top right hand corner of Ancient Cistern, we have the red Protoss player himself representing Psy Storm Gaming. It is Mindel VK. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner we have as a hunter we have the pink zerg player from the land of england of the uk representing platinum heroes it is eva eva ay 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 here we go main race oh you love to see it at least i do i appreciate it i appreciate it i know i know that he had to fight fight every fiber of his being and to, to stop himself from picking Protoss here and stopping the PvP from happening. I know he likes it. He likes the PvP. He wants it, but thankfully, he does uh, he does temper himself. <laughs> oh god, does pull does pull back and, and does go for the Zerg instead. It's beautiful. We have our ZVP before us and I'm pretty excited. Uh, we saw Eba earlier today, we saw him go up against Nice, and Nice was a very unpredictable, uh, sorry, unpredictable player. Nice. There was a game on Dragon Scales where he went Sky Toss, he went Double Stargate Void Ray, which you almost never see nowadays. Uh, we also saw some Twilight Council openers, we saw some standard Stargate openers as well. Nice, he just was all over the place with the way he was playing. Eba, 
for the most part, was able to keep up. He was able to keep up. He had solid enough macro where he was able to overcome the power that was Nice. And coming into this tournament, I would have said that Nice was one of the favorites to make it to the finals. But Eva stopped him. Can he keep going? Can he keep it up? I wonder. Because he's up against a very different kind of Protoss player. Middle VK, he can be aggressive in this matchup. I have seen him also go Skytoss and rush into Skytoss as well. So at least Eba is a little bit warmed up for that, at least a little bit. Um, but yeah, he's still a very different kind of player compared to Nice. I do think, though, that Eba beating Nice is a really good um, sign of things to come. I do think that that does kind of show that Eba's ZVP prowess is up to snuff and can go to-toe with any other Protoss player in this event. Meanwhile, Stargate opener. Stargate here from Middle VK. So nothing too crazy. Pretty standard stuff here from our Protoss player, at least initially. But we are on Ancient Cistern, one of the larger maps in the map pool. Because of how large this map is, we can, well, this can lead into more macro-oriented play, into longer games. Because of how wide open this map is as well, we could see Middle VK turtle instead of you know, pushing out instead of being too active on the map. Again, because it's so wide open, the possibility here for surrounds are quite high. Uh, and we can see Zerg players have really powerful engagements in the mid to late game, um, especially when it comes to how good their creep is by that point as well. So then, we'll see. We shall see Hatchgas pool out of Eba, nothing too crazy. Queens are being produced. We have the first Oracle on the way. I guess it's important to point out it's an oracle, not a void ray, not this time. Thankfully, thankfully. I'm I've seen enough void rays for today. <laughs> yeah. Too much, Pappy, too much. Oh. No more. As the adepts do threaten to shade into the natural base, but the lings and queens are in position. The adepts are forced back. And Minobi K is setting up for his third base. So again, everything so far is looking very normal, very standard. Uh, when you go for a Stargate opener like this into Oracles, this does mean that you can expand a little bit easier. The reason for that is because what can stop you? Lings? Well, we have an Oracle for that. We have Adepts. We have Good Sim City. There's nothing for these Lings. Well, these Lings can't really punish this third base. So that is why this has become such a standard meta opener here in PvZ. The Oracles are just such a great d defensive and offensive units. They give you a lot of scouting potential, a lot of uh, scouting capabilities as well as a lot of defensive capabilities as well, especially against Lings. As here we go, the first two Oracles are pushing out across the map. We have a couple of depths moving out at the same time. So Middle VK is gonna test the um, the reaction time here, the multi-prong defense of Eva. We have adepts heading towards the third. We have a double Oracle headed towards the main. The Queens are ready in the main base. The Spore is not quite done yet, but the Oracles are forced back. At the same time, the Adepts do shade into the third base, but Eba does pull back in time. will only lose one drone. He will shut down. Oh my god, I spoke too soon! The Oracles, they come in from behind. They take down seven drones. Ay ay ay. The drones, they were ferried towards the Oracles. One Oracle will go down, so pretty good damage uh, to be able to shut down at least one of those Oracles, but 10 drones in total for an Oracle. I would say worth it for middle VK. Oh. Aye, aye, aye. Things are looking so good. Things are looking so good here for Eva. But uh, alas, the one-two punch of middle VK was just too, was, was just too much. And Eva's going for an all-in. Interesting. Okay, so we have a lair. The lair was spotted by Middle VK, but he hasn't seen anything else. This is a Ling Queen Nidus all in coming here from Eva. So he doesn't care about his drones. Not anymore. It's not about the workers. It's about the Lings. It's about the Queens. What do we have at home to defend? We have a shield battery at the third base. We have one shield battery at the natural. We have two oracles, a handful of stalkers as well. But this overseer is providing vision into the main base. The main that looks so much more vulnerable. There is a pylon in, posi in position to scout. But just because he sees it coming doesn't mean he can stop it. As the Lings are distracting the army. And here we go. We do have the Nidus on the way. Middle VK so far. No reaction. Does waste quite a lot of energy here on the front lines. Yeah, he pulls back. He warps in at the third. Which means he didn't see it in the main. Nidus will complete the Queen's Waddle on in. They're going to be spreading that creep, taking control of the main base. The tech is exposed. The entire army is going to be reacting. At the same time, the Lynx flood in towards that third base. It is left so vulnerable. Oh god, and I chose this pylon! 
Oh, all the upgrades are delayed. Everything is depowered. Stalkers are falling. And again, we can just back off and rotate over towards the third base instead. The boys are being pulled. Shield battery is out of energy. And the queens, they're standing, they're fighting. They can transfuse each other. The creep is being spread. The main base mineral line is going down. And so is the third. Uh, Mindel VK is trying to hold on, but again, he just can't really do much of anything here. He does not blink. He has repowered that Twilight Council, but it's about to go down. Oh my god, we can go for we can go for everything. We do have an overcharge. Oh, he's gonna keep alive a little bit longer, but no dice. Blink is denied. Overcharge just cannot outheal the damage output of all these queens and the links as well. There we go. Overcharge has run out. Plus one is on the way, but ah, Forge is gonna die. <laughs> oh god, Forge is gonna go down. Lings, they slip into the natural base as well, and... Yeah, from here, I mean, Eva, he may as well just rotate over towards the third base, just look to deny mining whenever he can, wherever he can. Middle VK has done a good job at, like, trying to stabilize here in his main, but I say stabilize, he's just being forced further and further back into his main. But we are running out of transfuse. are running out back at home we have we are transitioning we have a hydrogen on the way additional gases are being taken Eva from here he can drone he has done enough and he may not have killed middle VK but he has taken away any kind of advantage or any kind of timing he would have had twilight counts had to be rebuilt blink restarted uh, forget about the forge forget about the upgrade forget about plus one as mindy vk is just trying to chrono out as many probes as he can likewise that's probably the biggest criticism that i can have of eva is that he probably could have started droning sooner um so we could have a better economy here to muster up a second wave that much faster but we can see eva he's kind of stuck between droning and making hydras like he's He's running up at least a little bit, but he's still really heavily focused on building up another army. Going into those Hydras. The wall is not a wall. But the Lings, they ignore the natural for now. They threaten the third base. MinoBK is fortifying himself quite well here. This is why, like, droning would have been the better option. Just because Minovike, as time goes on, he's getting a better and better defense. We can see now Eva, he's kind of accepting the reality and, and he's droning. Being active with his army, but a lot of these drones, sorry, a lot of these things and Hydras, they, they could have been workers. As Eva is transitioning into an infestation pit, soon to be Hive, I imagine, as well. Adrenal glands. Eva still has a lead. He still has an advantage. But he has to be careful not to throw too much away. A lot of links are being shaved off. Middle VK slowly taking control of his fourth base once again. Storm is on the way. Because of that, we should be working towards Lurkers. I mean, to be fair, the High Templar haven't been spotted yet. Well, I don't know about pushing in right now. I mean, to be fair, like, Storm still isn't done, so the High Templar aren't too threatening. Wings are coming in from behind. A lot of Hydras are going down. Sorry, a lot of Stalkers are going down. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. The Stalkers did go down. Uh, the base is cancelled. Eva can get out of there without losing too much. Behind this, there's that Lurker Den. There is that Hive. So Eva isn't resting on his laurels. He is taking up taking up into Hydra Lurker Viper. Getting his fifth base up and running. Getting fully saturated. Up to 85 workers. From here, he's in a really good position. 
Meanwhile, Middle VK is going to be turtling up and going into Sky Toss. Now the question becomes, can Middle VK survive? Can he live long enough to actually make use of these Stargates and this Fleet Beacon? Can he make any carriers before Eba maxes out? That's, that's kind of the big question here. Because Middle VK is going to be stuck on these four bases. He's going to be defending back at home. He's going to be turtling as hard as he can. Eba will be able to get into this lurker, these lurkers a little bit sooner. Um, he may decide to wait for the upgrades to finish. And because of that, Mindo VK may be able to buy enough time. Oh. Let's see. Zella Rambai is going to be pulling apart the attention of Eva. It's a kill, not a cancel on that hatchery. have been revealed. Three carriers are being produced at a time. Uh-oh. Eva still just working on those upgrades, still building up a larger lurker count. Eva hasn't scouted the Sky Toss. He doesn't know. He has an overseer outside the main, but he hasn't gone in for a scout, so he doesn't know about that transition. He doesn't know that these lurkers aren't anywhere near as valuable as they otherwise would be. Looking at the unit count right now, we have 13 Lurkers, one Hydra. We don't have a Spire, which is also dangerous. There we go. The carriers have been revealed. Spire immediately thrown down. We need to trade, though. Like, we need to we need to free up supply for Corruptors, for Hydras. Hydras on the way. Spore Forest being thrown down. <laughs> Oh, we're in for a long one, aren't we? Oh, no. Eva. Mainly run by, doesn't find too much, runs into the Gateway Army and the Archons. High Templar are safe and sound behind this. Mindo VK just walling off at every turn, making sure that he doesn't have to worry about these run bys. Oh. The blink is punished. Middle VK just diving on top of those spores takes spines to the face. It's gonna have to back off. Spire still not quite done. We have a second spire on the way for upgrades. The goal here for Eba should be to make sure that Middle VK doesn't get another base up and running. Uh, this northern base, though, I don't think Eba can stop it. There's another hatchery is going down. I mean, okay, we got we gotta calm down, buddy. We gotta calm down. <laughs> down a little bit too far. So we're looking for any pickoffs, so we should be getting an abduct. There we go. We do get a yoink off. One carrier goes down for free. Very good pickoff here from Eva. Zalaramai does get cleaned up by those lurkers. And you can see as we're losing Hydras, as we're losing Lings, we're replacing them. We're replacing them with Corruptors. Corruptors are slowly being incorporated into the army. Run by coming in. And these cells are actually going to be able to do some damage. The yeah, lurkers, they have to be repositioned. So it's will be cleaned up. As Eba is just looking to spread creep everywhere else. Now these five bases that Middle VK has, they are the easiest bases to take. Taking a stick from here is gonna be very difficult. As we see Eba just forcing his way up this ramp. Solid feedbacks on some of these queens. Oh, Prism makes its way into the main base. We do get a warp into the main, but we have lurkers back at him to defend. How many vipers do we have? We have two vipers. Oh, have to be careful. 
two vipers ready for those abducts. Yeah, the lurker is just bullying back at those high templar. Yeah, we get an abdu another abduction, and it does feel like Eva, because of his earlier advantages, like he just has a better army right now. We only have five carriers here for Mindo VK, and they are coming out of the production. They're not all in the front lines. Fifth base is denied. And this is pretty huge. Middle BK, he desperately needs that fifth. Oh. <laughs> As the Zelarombe is getting damage done. No, but we have a Nidus. The Hydras, they do come back home to defend. Prism is kept alive. Mindo VK going to try to expand elsewhere. And I'm kind of worried. Eva's in a really weird position. Yeah, oh god. <laughs> He's going to be losing a lot of his lurkers there. Caught out of position. Kind of found himself stuck against the wall, but thankfully the Corruptors are safe and sound. The Queens as well. We, we can afford some losses. You can see Eba trying to keep up with the rotation of his opponent. Solid Transfuse keeps the Viper alive. As Middle VK has a pretty insane death bolt here. He's got Storms, Archons, plenty of carriers. Behind this move out, he is expanding on the right-hand side. Is attempting to get another base up and running. Oh. <laughs> oh god, we do eat a storm to the face, only abducting one of those oracles. Feedbacks land as well. He was in some trouble. We don't really have a spore force to support this army either. Like, the carrier count's getting pretty insane. We are up to 10 carriers. Earlier, we only had five. That's that's when Eba kind of was able to assert himself. But now with 10? And Middle VK takes down at the top left hand base. Again, no spores here to support. No spores anywhere, actually. As Middle VK was forced to cancel the base on the right hand side, but he's looking to expand towards the top left once again. Ay ay ay. Here we go, he's pushing up the ramp. Vipers are gonna zone him away. It looks like we can get one carrier. Yeah, the, the Vipers really make things uh, complicated. Like, they're, they're looking for these abductions. They're looking for even power bombs, if possible, uh, depending on what kind of army we're talking about. Middle VK, he has to make sure he's proactive with this High Templar, looking for those feedbacks on those Vipers, or even storms on the Corruptors. As we can see, Middle VK just cleaning up every single tumor out on the map. Oh, as we are just diving on for the the Archons are out of position. <clears throat> the Archons are out of position. Oh my god, what's that? Three carriers go down? Ay, ay, ay. Middle VK just suffering a little bit there with his army movements. He's gonna have to react here to that lurker. Bases are being taken. And Middle VK has to turn back around, comes back in. Meanwhile, Eba is getting ready for that Broodlord transition instead. Again, they're going to do a, a much better job here at just avoiding the ground army, keeping up as well. I, in a way, keeping up. Like, Lurkers are still more maneuverable than Broodlords, but. 
It will be a nice addition. The base. Oh god, no! No, not like this! As I say that, what is that? Five, six lurkers go down for free. Ay, ay, ay. Twelve lurkers. Oh no. <laughs> We have more lurkers harassing you across the map. To be fair, I understand that Ebo, he wants to refine his army and get rid of these lurkers, but not like this, Baki. Not like this. Oh my god. As these lurkers are getting a little bit out of hand, seven probes do go down, but finally the lurkers are going to get cleaned up. NWK has a fifth up and running here in the center of the map as well. Can Eva deny these bases? He actually doesn't know about it. He doesn't know. He doesn't see. And he has to rotate back around. It does, fe it does feel like Middle VK has obviously had a lot of map control over the past couple of minutes. And I don't know if Eva can really wrangle that away from him. I mean, it's possible. It's just going to come down to, to the spellcasters. If he can lock down the army with Pungles or with abductions. I just don't know if he really can. See, so he sold Fungal on some of those Archons. Broodlord is going ham. We get an abduction. Do you yoink one of those carriers? Pretty good moment here for Eva. same time clearly checking his vision he finally has spotted that center base it's been mining for so long Eba didn't know that it was here otherwise he would have been trying to harass it the entire time here we go finally the lurkers have arrived the bailings are rolling on in ah, we're gonna get a couple of pros that the lurkers are all gonna get cleaned up And Tempests are now on the way. It's one of those things where, um, because Mindo VK was able to establish the fifth and sixth base, it does feel like he has a lot of leeway at the moment. As we can see, time and time again, he's just forcing Eva back, getting damage done. Drones going down here and there, lurkers, hydras. I do think that initially Iba did a great job this game, like getting ahead and transitioning into his late game composition, but since then things have kind of snowballed out of control in favor of Mindul. But still will come down to that big fight. Still will come down to if whether or not we can abduct some of these carriers, Fungal, Parabon. Whether the Broodlords are able to catch some of the ground army out of position. Banks are still impressive. The banks are still impressive. Like, the problem is that because... So, like, the reason why I'm kind of coming to this conclusion is because Middle VK has done a great job at containing Eva. Eva hasn't been able to establish these, like, center bases or the southern base or top left. He's tried to, like, multiple times. He, he's had hatcheries here, but he just cannot mine for them. He cannot hold on to those bases. So it's been, like, a bit of a role reversal where Eva's being starved out. You can see he's, like, running out of gases. Running out of minerals. Middle VK has just been knocking him back time and time again. So outside of a big fight, like things are looking in favor of Middle VK. At least unless Eba is able to get one of these hatcheries properly up and running. As Middle VK just keeps rotating around, making sure that if a base has been taken, he shuts it down. Lurkers are now gonna be denying the center base. Middle VK going to be able to rotate around. Push this back. Well, Zella run by Denies top left. The location of the Lurkers have been, has been revealed. Middle VK could go for it. But that's a lot of investors. <laughs> 
is a little bit faster, but the Tempests have arrived. They're going to be able to outrange Eva, pick away at his army. Okay, Minificate is going to be very careful. You can see him dancing here with the army of Eva. If he ever does overextend, he will lose those Tempests. Oh my god. <laughs> Storms are insane. Spores are going down. The Broodlords do move forward, but the Tempest can pick away at them. And here we go, Eva. He's going for it. Oh, it does go the, for the Fungal and Powerbomb combo. We do have a shield battery. We do have an overcharge. Eva, he's diving on forward. He wants the fight. He gets zoned away by the Storms. But he takes down every single Archon. Now, there's nothing stopping him from diving on top of the army. The Archons are full, and there's only a couple of Storms left. Is it going to be enough? Oh, my God. I think there's one Storm remaining. And it will connect with those, with those Corruptors. Every single carrier goes down. And both armies are hurting. <laughs> both armies are hurting. The base falls. Eva. Is it going to be coming out on top after that? But Middle VK is remaxing on more carriers. He is remaxing, he's rebuilding, he's taking another base. Eva can't let this get up and running. He can't let him get it. Ah. Burgers are revealed. Again, once the Tempest revealed themselves, um, Eba, he just had to commit to a fight. He just had to go for it. And now, Middle VK has... It feels like he has better mining right now. Like, uh, we have a base here for Eba without any gases. We have top left with only one gas geyser. And that's it. That's all Eba has. So here we go. He takes down the northern base. A little bit, he kept a lot of his investors alive as well. As the lurkers are coming into play, four more lurkers are in production, vipers as well. Without Skytops units, we can't really break these Lurker lines. And the Tempest did go down earlier. Show us the Storms. Ah, not the best Storms here for Mindo VK. It's being forced back. Carriers are backing up back at home. I kind of like this. So what Mindo VK is doing... He has a lot of carriers, actually. He has so many carriers, but he's keeping them hidden until now. And the entire time, Eva, he's been morphing in his Hydras into Lurkers, and he's been morphing in more Broodlords as well. Like, he's focused on an anti-ground army because he believes that there's no more Skytoss. It's not true, though. <laughs> there's, there's plenty of Skytoss. Ay, ay, ay. We do have a couple of Vipers. We have one Viper. One Viper available for Eva. He's got nine Corruptors, zero Hydras. You can see Middle VK just expanding towards the bottom right. His main army looking terrifying. But to be fair, Eba now has a fresh mining base. Does have top left. Does have a fresh mining base. Middle VK is looking for it. He's making sure that Eva isn't expanding towards the south. Harriers have now been revealed. Five more Corruptors are on the way. We'll see if Eva can hold on. Both players have been hurting. <laughs> Uh, both players are hurting. Another base is being taken. Eva, he has seen this. He does have a bird link. He's aware that this base is up and running.
Meanwhile, middle VK just more concerned with cleaning up all this creep. There we go. Lurker counterattack is uh, was in the middle of moving out. Is spotted by the Protoss. And this is still anyone's game. <laughs> With both players mining from a fresh base, it's still anyone's game. Big worker shots go off on the Archons. 10% on the, on the way again. And again, this changes a lot. We saw the last time the Tempest came in, um, they, they did force Eva to fight. And it could happen again. Well, Eva even taking one of Mindel's bases. Let's go. Hatchery is on the way. Eva trying to rebuild more of his Corruptors. Now up to 23. Earlier he had 9. He's got 8 Infestors. He can try to go for Neurals if he wants to. Uh, but yeah, because Middle VK has like, rotated here towards the south, he is allowing Eva to expand towards the north instead. Has been spotted. Middle VK can't allow this to happen. May not care. Three is on the way. I'm surprised we haven't seen a mothership this game either. No mothership. No minus 400, minus 400. Feels bad, man. Yeah, okay. Apparently we just need zealots. <laughs> a zealot run by is gonna deny is gonna deny that northern base. Main army pushing forward towards the other. Mining base. The only other mining base here for Eva. There's only a couple of patches left though. Not too important. Again, I think Mindel was hoping that maybe there was going to be another expansion down here. Up! Oh. A little bit of miscontrol. Oracle does go down. Oh, big storm on the Corruptors. This tempest, I have to be so careful. Oh. It's just chipping away at the army. Lurker run by is going to be denied here by these gateway units. We're taking a fresh mining base here towards the south. We're trying to. Eva is, should, should be stopping him. Meanwhile, we're just chilling. We're just <laughs> Both players have finally maxed out again. It took a while. It took like 10 minutes, but we got there. Oof. It does go down, and here we go. A bit of an overextension. We do get a Tempest. We get a second Tempest as well. Big fungals on the army. A couple of murals on these Archons will be helping out in the anti-air. And Eva is going for it. He dives on top of everything, gets every single Tempest, and it looks like he's going for the carriers as well. Can he get them? The storms! The storms! We need one more! It looks like... It looks like Admin VK will push on through just barely. Never mind. Oh, God. It's so close. The Lynx coming to reinforce, and the Lynx clean up the Archons. Eva barely wins out in that fight, but with reinforcements coming and he doesn't have enough to keep pushing. The armies basically just deleted each other. <laughs> oh god, but with these stalker reinforcements, this may just be too much. We have 22 links on the way though, and we still have these lurkers. We still have them. We don't have detection. Observer is on the way. 
have a couple of investors, but GG gets called. Eva taps out, and Mindle VK takes game number one. Ah, <laughs> after 35 minutes. Oh my god, Eva had such a strong start with his Link Queen Nidusol in. Did so much damage with it, but alas, wasn't able to. Wasn't able to snowball from there. Mindle VK just turtled up, turtled up on three bases, went to Skytoss. Cut the map almost in half. And, uh, yeah. In the end, GG, well played. Well played. Oh my god. As. Sorry, I have to fix that. As Middle VK does take the first game in this series, one game away from advancing on to the grand finals. Almost forgot. But of course, that was just. This is just the semi final, so plenty more matches ahead of us. And a really powerful start here from Middle VK. I mean. It was pretty shaky, I should say. Like, it was very back and forth. There were moments where Eba was ahead, moments for Mindo VK as well. He had some really good fights from Eba. Um, but the reality is that he never had a good economy, or he never had, like, a solid bank to work with, to fall back on. Um, he had a really hard time just taking his half of the map and expanding and taking these fringe bases. Shout out to Mindo VK, right? Like, he was so adamant about going for these zealot counterattacks or... Zealot counterattacks and just denying these bases time and time again, not allowing Eba to ever really mine too freely. GG. GG. Well played. And with that, we're getting into game two. Game number two. Let's go. And spawning in the top left hand corner. In the top left hand corner of Dragon Scales, we have the Red Protoss player representing Psy Storm Gaming, Ooh, leading the series at 1 to 0. It is Mindle VK. Also, I'll address what you're saying in the chat, Eva, because I agree. Spawning in the bottom right hand corner, we have this one. We have the English Zerg player representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Eva. And uh, I don't. I think things were really close when you tapped out. I was a little. I was. I was, I was a little bit surprised when you did. Um, I do think things were. I don't. I wouldn't say that you were ahead, but I would say that like things were still really close between you two. And just because he was, he was as broke as you were. Middle BK was as broke as you were. So, yeah, that was uh, really close. <laughs> I was really close. Ay ay ay. Ah, oh, GG, GG. Well played. Mental win, Bobby. Mental win. Catching up in the chat. Did he random versus Nice? No, no, no. He only random versus Azura. He played a uh, main race against Nice. Main race. I would next time. Trust me, I'm a PvP god. You're an animal, Eva. Stop it. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Shaking my head, she shaking my head. In, I see in the chat. What rank are they? Um, I'll say around what, like around six k, six k on EU, around that. GM, of course, GM. When I reminded, I when I rewinded, I was triggered. <laughs> ah, Eva, not like this, not like this. Here we go. We are diving into our next game. Oh boy. After a pretty intense game one, very back and forth, very dynamic, very late as well. Did go the distance, did go all the way to late game. And once again, we have a Stargate opener from Middle VK. Everything's looking normal, everything's looking standard. Likewise, Eba going for a hatch gas pool. Uh, potentially even a 15 hatch. Wasn't paying too much attention in the early game. Oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Was a 15 hatch opener from Eva. He is going to be going gases. We see, we have seen this a lot today. We saw this against Azura. We saw this against Nice. Very greedy way to open uh, that Eva has been going for. Delaying his gas by quite a lot here in favor of getting his hatchery on location. Getting a faster third base. And making up for what otherwise would be... Um, 
a bit of a more inefficient build. So this is a, a way to kind of balance that out. But it does mean that Eber will have a much later link speed, much later tech in general. See, so yeah, really interesting. I don't really see too many other Zerg players go for gasless openers like this. And when I say that, I, I mean, I don't think I see any other Zerg player. Um, even um, Serral and Rainer and the other Koreans, when they go for a, 50, for a 15 hash, they still do prioritize their, their gas. Um, so pretty interesting. Uh, an interesting adaptation here from Eva. As we are getting into this. Unovk working on his third base, working on his additional oracles as well. Again, nothing too crazy out of the Protoss. It's what we expect to be seeing. But we are on Dragon Scales, one of the smaller maps in the map pool. It's goaded. Look, <laughs> mate. I keep. T Look, there's a reason why I say that Lorimbo is the devil on Eba's shoulder. Of course, he told you about this build. Of course, it's shaking my head. <laughs> este Lorimbo, papi. Este Lorimbo. Ay, ay, ay. You also do it versus Terran? Of course you do. Right, I, need to, I need to have a talking to with Larimbo after this. <laughs> 66 drones and 5 minutes with 10 queens versus Spirit. It's cracked, Bob. It's cracked. Aye, aye, aye. Let's go. Let's get into this. Send it to follow up as well. Minivike is going for his Twilight Council and his Forge for a plus 1, as well as either Blink or Charge. I imagine going to be Blink, but we'll see. Let's see what he goes for. As the initial oracles are now zooming across the map, we have a depth shading into the third base. We have the oracles going into the natural as well. The queens, for the most part, are in position. Two drones do go down. Oh, can we get more? We do not. Oh my god, very quick spores coming out from Eba. Does save those drones and only loses two. Very nicely done here by Eba. Very nice um, management here. <laughs> Uh, from all that chaos as across the map, it's not going to be Blink. We are going plus one charge instead from Mindo VK. Crisis management, that's it. I don't know why I was stuck on chaos management. Shaking my head. <laughs> yeah, so far minimizing his losses. The Oracles did all survive, so they're going to be able to regenerate their shields and they're going to be able to head back in for some more damage. Do have a spore at the natural base. Eba does see this ahead of time. He does reposition his queens and he does zone away those oracles. Again, so far, really good positioning. At the same time, we have a Ling counter attack as well. We get a surround on the gateway. We should be forcing a cancel and. Oh, oh no, never mind. Gateway will survive. As Middle Vicay is just fully walling up here at his third base. Making sure that Bailing run bys or Ling counter attacks have a harder time finding damage. As we are getting into this. My god, that's a lot of gateways. <laughs> that's going to be nine gateways here from Mindo VK. I imagine we're going to be working on a Templar Archives behind this. Yep, there we go. So we've seen a lot of this in ZVP, but it looks like he wants to go for some Archons across the map and then just reinforce with Mass Zealots. So a pretty strong Archon timing, basically. Oh, so we do get a good surround, but the Oracles are here. Lings are forced back. Very nicely done by Mindel VK. Let's clean up those links and he's working on the fort. I'm still pretty sure he wants to try to push with this, but we'll see if he commits or if he just intends to expand and take the fourth base instead. But he's going to be scouting. Does get eyes on the fourth Nexus. Here we go. The army is moving out. We have a Zealot run by here on the left hand side. We have that Prism getting ready to warp in those High Templar. No, we're going for the Zealots instead. No Archons yet. Oh, no, there they are. <laughs> there they are. Meanwhile, Eva has been able to drone up quite nicely up to 70. He's got a wall of spines on the way, recognizing that he has the potential to be pulled apart. He's getting ready for the defense. So everything's about to pop off. Um, Eba's pushing in with his Roaches towards the fourth base. At the same time, we have the Zealots and the Archons pushing on the right-hand side. We have Zealots here pushing on the left and a drop into the main. So far, the main base is going to be safe and secure. The fourth of Middle VK should be cancelled, by the way, as it is getting quite low. Oh, that's a kill, not a cancel. 
Likewise, though, Eba is also losing hatcheries. The hatchery on the left-hand side does go down. The base on the right as well. Both players are hurting. The Roach army is turning back around. The Archons, they want a little bit more damage. They go for the Queens, but they're not going to get into the Mineral Line. Reinforcements should clean this up. But Eba does hold, and as the dust settles, Eba may have lost his fourth and his fifth, but he still has a standing army. And middle VK, he just threw away everything. He threw away his entire army to make that happen. He doesn't really have too much at home to defend. Kindle is in some trouble right now. He's got three Archons to his name. He's got two Archons. Ah, now he's got one. Zelda Rumbay is going to do some damage, which is nice and all, but... The Bailings, they roll on in. They crash. They connect with the, with the probes. And there's no way for Middle to hold on to his third base. Sure, he denies the fourth again, but alas, there's just too much Zerg on the ground. Eva should have enough to completely break the third. He gets the Mineral Line at least. Have an Immortal coming out. Oh, that's a lot of Zealots, actually. Eva is going to lose his Roaches. But he's going to be careful not to overextend. Uh, not going to lie. As he is not slowing down. He's going to cash the reinforcing probes. No. The rallying probes even. Gets a couple of them. Once again, middle VK. He doesn't care about defending back at home. He's just sending everything across the map. This time though, Eva does keep up. His roaches do come out in time. And things are going to be settling down. Eva trying desperately to get a fourth base up and running. Oh god, can he get it? I don't think he can. Another cancel. Ay, ay, ay. Like, Eva still has a strong standing army, and oh my god, that immortal is looking very exposed. But now with Void Rays, now with these Archons, like, Eva's supply is overinflated. I don't know if this is really a fight that he wants to take. Good connections on those Zealots! Looks like Eva is going to be able to out-trade his opponent. Can he finally break the third base? Ah. More Zealots come in. The plus two Zealots, Bobby, gets the Archon. I was about to say the wall isn't a wall, but the Roaches, they don't quite go for a run by. We <laughs> be brought back to defend instead. Eva just remaxing, sticking to 68 workers. He's double expanding as well, trying to get these bases back up and running. The Zelts are going to stop him, but again, Eva doesn't care. He's pushing out. There's just not enough at home. There never has been. Getting into the mineral line once again. These elves are doing a lot of damage across the map, to be fair. But I feel like the reinforcements should be enough. As this is getting pretty scrappy. Uh, on the left. Oh, good target firing. Two oracles go down. And even though Eva himself doesn't have the best economy behind this, he's now finally got a fourth base up and running. He has additional larva to work with as well. He's gonna lose that hatchery. <laughs> Middle VK is so wild. Jesus. He has no chill, just constantly sending everything out. He gets the hatchery in the end. Can he somehow hold on? Ah, uh, Baneys, they're rolling in from behind. They're getting to the mineral line. And even though it looks like Mindel's army is going to be able to come out on top, he's going to be losing his mineral line. Once again, the probes, they go down. Ah. It just has to be too much. Ah. 
I mean, I guess the, um, this is very similar to, it wasn't Mindor VK versus Rostock, but it was another ZVP, where the upgrades are just doing so much for Mindor. He's got plus three attack. So because of that, the Charge Shot Archon is just trading so efficiently every time, as long as there aren't Banelings involved. So this is another cancel on that base. God, there aren't too many Zells to support this army. There are Void Rays, though. But yeah, Eva should be able to clean this up finally for the last time. Can't deal with the Void Rays, but cleans up the main army. We only have Zelts to defend back at home. Queens are being brought forward. Mindo VK on his last legs. Refusing to give up. Till his last breath. Ah. As Warping is going to be denied. Lings are flooding in across the map as well. We do have another Zelt on the left hand side. And we are going to get a lot of damage done. A lot of drones are going to fall. And Mino VK holds. <laughs> he does barely hold on. Jesus, these constant rambais. Ay, ay, ay. I'm impressed that Mino VK has been able to keep up in the worker count. But GG gets called and Eva ties up the series one to one. We're going to the ace match. We're going all the way to game three. Let's go. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, once again, really back and forth between both Eva and Middle VK. In that, in that game especially, like there were like four things happening at once. Everything was on fire. Um, but as we saw, Middle VK, he was spending his entire army attacking which meant that he just didn't have anything for any of the counterattacks. So every single time Eba pushed out across the map, um, Mindo VK was barely holding on. It was just yeah, losing a little bit too much. More importantly, losing a lot of his workers as well. So he couldn't really sustain his losses. Wouldn't really keep up. And now we have an ace match. We have a game three. Let's go. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner of Altitude, we have our red Protoss player representing Psy Storm Gaming. It is Mindel VK. And spawning in the top right hand corner, we have as a opponent, we have the English Zerg player representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Eva. go. Jesus. This series has been pretty wild and pretty back and forth so far between these two players. God, what does game three have in store for us? We've been seeing a lot. We saw late game Skytos versus Eva. We saw pretty committed charge on Archon pushes from Middle VK in that last game as well. And now we're on altitude. Now we're on the largest map in the map pool. Doesn't get any bigger than this. Am I feeling Sky Toss? Uh, it wouldn't be a bad map for it, I'll be honest. Wouldn't be a bad map for Sky Toss, but we'll see. Hope not. As Eba is going for a hatch gas pool, standard opener this time from Eba. Saving himself none of this 15 hatch gasless shenanigans. Going into a much more standard opener here. Because it's altitude, the probe gets here a little bit too late, so we don't have to go for any kind of early hatch timing. Uh, a standard one will be on location for the most part. We're getting into this. Let's go. Hope our players aren't too out of it. I know Ebo was in the chat earlier saying that after game one he was pretty triggered. Um, so hopefully he can you know, reset his mindset a little bit. Be cool, calm, and collected. We have an ace match, so hopefully feeling a little bit better getting into this.
You see Minovik just getting into his gate expand. Is looking to throw down in sec. This is not looking like a Stargate opener. The pylon is thrown down behind the mineral line. But, okay, there we go. <laughs> is going to be the Stargate in the end. Interesting location. It's further back, so it's going to be harder to scout. It's going to take longer for the Oracle to get across the map as a result. But, uh, mind games. Mind games. Oh, the third base of Eba is being taken. Bring speed on the way. And we are just droning. But also, just bringing it all back as well. Eba did go for a Link Queen Night is all in in game one as well. God, game one was wild. So let's hopefully not get a repeat. We'll see. As the Lings do slip into the main base, they get a free scout of the tech as well as the initial uh, the initial unit coming out for, from middle VK. Let's get one probe already. Oh, doesn't get a second. But uh, yeah, it looked like middle VK was waiting for the Ling to leave before starting his first unit. It's going to be an Oracle first. Eba should be able to dip back in, and there we go, he does get confirmation of that first Oracle coming out. So, really nicely done. Really nicely done. Meanwhile, Link Speed kicks in. The Adepts are going to be threading a shade into the natural, but we have plenty to keep up with it. So far, a solid early game from the Zerg. BK just losing a probe early on, which did hurt him a little bit, but outside of that, it should be working. should be able to get this third base up and running. And we'll see what the follow-up is going to be. From here, we can go into Blink, we can go into Charge, we can go into Double Robo Colossus production, which wouldn't be a bad option either on Altitude. Ooh, third is going to be delayed. Links are able to take down that probe just in time. Very nicely done there by Eva. Does it slow down his opponent? We are just droning to have that second Oracle on the way as well. And after that, we should be seeing a third. Um, Eva, on the flip side of things, is going for a Roach Warren at an interesting time. It's going to be around a 4 minute 30 Roach Warren. Very safe. <laughs> very safe, very defensive. As behind this, Mudovic is just working on his Forge, on his Twilight Council. So just like the previous game, plus one in charge is what he went for in game number two. Here, he could go for Blink or Charge again. I'm feeling Charge, but we'll see. As the Oracles dive into the main base, looking for some damage, they can one-shot workers. They take down four of them. They get out with their lives at the same time. Adepts shade into the natural, but the Lings do keep up with them. Get another two drones. Not too bad. Six workers in total for two Adepts. Well worth it here for Mindo VK. Meanwhile, he is going for Blink, not for Charge. I appreciate it. I appreciate the variety here that we're seeing from both of our players. We already had Charge on Archon. Now we're going to be seeing a much more Blink Stalker heavy composition instead. While the Lings do pick off a Pylon for free. Oracles diving into the main, looking for more damage they get. Three more drones, and the oracles all survive. Very nicely done here by Middle VK. Uh, because he's going for Blink, I'm really curious about something. I'm curious if he actually plans to be active. He doesn't have a Robo yet, or if he plans to be defensive. Um, it is quite common here, as he has, he's setting up a wall. It is quite common here um, to go into Blink, to go for mass gateways, of course, to wall off, but you actually avoid warp ins and you go for. Like a more, like, solid army instead. Like, building up Archons, Immortals, Colossi. And slowly taking a fourth base as well. Oh my god. <laughs> As the fifth is denied. So I wonder how aggressive Middle BK plans to be right now. A decent army. Plus one is about to kick in. Storm is on the way. Okay, no Colossi. No Black Spay. But yeah, as we can see, Middle VK is just setting up for a fourth. So just very defensive play. Omar Protoss. 
I don't really see him committing too hard to this. I think this is a really risky move, moving out. Um, he can apply some pressure, sure, but he doesn't have a War Prism. He can't reinforce. He's going to clean up some of these tumors, but Iba is getting ready for a surround. Yeah, we just get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, Middle VK doesn't want to stick around any longer. Playing with fire. Things they do get a bit of a surround. But Blink is done. Middle VK is going to be able to force this back. Meanwhile, there's the Robo and Charge. The creator has been having a lot of success with this, where like you build up a really like a death ball of an Archon Immortal Army. We saw Nice do this earlier today. Well, that does come to pass. The Roaches try to tango with these Stalkers. A lot of Roaches are going down, but we have Bailey's behind this as well. Eba committing so hard to this bush. Bailing speed just now kicks in massive storms on the Bailing army. Oh my god. Despite that, the Bailing st still deal with all the side defense. Shield batteries go down. This fourth base is barely not being broken. Middle VK does hold on. Has to be careful not to. Yeah. <laughs> not to overextend. He's just gonna. Replace the shield batteries, replace the cannons. And Eva's doing it again. Eva, he's cutting workers here at 70, or 71 technically. He's just maxing out on Ling Bane Road Travager. He wants to break this base. He's deciding not to take up even further into like Hydras and Lurkers or a Hive Infestation Pit. No, Eva, he's sticking with Ling Bane Road Travager. Oh, as I say that, he is droning. Never mind. It looks like Eva maybe has recognized he can't quite kill his opponents. Oh my god. A lot of storms going off the bailings. They do find their connections. 13 probes go down. 20 probes even, as we even have a bailing run by here on the right hand side. Middle VK wasn't able to react in time. 23 probes. And Evo more or less has been able to drone up to 80. Taking another hatchery. Still hasn't thrown down any tech. Still just committed to Ling Bane Roach Ravager. Ling Bane Roach. Will this hurt him in the end? Ah, uh, it's possible. Meanwhile, Middle VK is fully walling off here. In between his bases. Bailing run by is not gonna work. Now there's only one way in, and that's here. There we go. Infestation bit's now on the way. Eba is now commencing his transition. This is a little bit late from Eba, um, but it's on the way, at least nonetheless. It's on the way. We have some decent storms pushing back the army. Zella Rama on the right hand side takes down a hatchery. Good positioning here using the minerals as well to reduce that surface area. Prism goes into the main. We do finish a massive warping of Zealots into the main base as well. We're going to get eyes on the infestation pits. Do we get eyes on the spire? So far it looks like we don't. The spire hasn't been spotted. Hive on the way. With this, we, with this, we can head towards Broodlords. Which I think, do you think would be a wise choice? Especially with all these big soldiers and Archons, I don't think Mutas are on the table. As, uh, it's happening again. <laughs> I mean, this is, again, this is something that we see a lot on Altitude. Like, just fully wall off. We turtle up. We defend on three bases. Get a fourth. Get a fifth. And then head towards Sky Toss. Sky Toss is upon us. Let's go. Once again.
And again, initially, Eva was doing a great job at just getting economic damage done. But again, it did feel like this hive was a little bit too late. So because of that, like tech-wise, they're kind of keeping up with each other. Both players are trying to deny each other's bases. That's a kill, not a cancel. On that Nexus. Likewise, hatcheries are also being cancelled. Carrier production has commenced. Greater Spire is on the way. We're going to the late game again, Bobby. We're going again. Let's go. Ah. Uh. Now, the problem is that um, Eva still needs to recognize what's going on. Uh, I believe he hasn't scouted the main base in quite some time. Um, yeah, so he doesn't know that carrier production has already commenced. I mean, to be fair, he can get he can like get a read on this regardless. Upon seeing how defensive his opponent's being, you can deduce that there's going to be a Skytos transition. That has a bit of a case pushing out on the map. Throwing up a lot of this creep. Now, as opposed to Ancient Cistern, um, Iwe, he's not going to be spending any time on Hydra Lurker. He's going to be going straight into those Broodlords and Corruptors. As I say that, Hydra is thrown down. I mean, there is a place for Lurkers, to be fair. But um, I think we're going to be skipping that tech for the most part. There we go. Broodlords are on the way. God, that's a lot of Banelings. 75 Banelings, but the Storms take them all down. Oh my god. 75 Banelings, they get... What, like a, a unit? They get one, or one Archon, an Adept, a couple of Stalkers. 15 Probes that did go down the left-hand side, but at the same time, Zealot Rumbai is trying to take down this Hatchery as well. Looks like they will not get it. So Eva still coming out on top after killing that mineral line. It did cost him a lot of banelings though. 75 banelings. Jesus. His carriers are on the way. Eva, I believe he only has one spire, so he can only make one upgrade at a time. Does already have those brood lords. have those broodlords. Does he have the anti-air? Does he have what he needs to deal with the carriers as they are about to reveal themselves? Uh, ooh, we just morphed every single corruptor into a broodlord. Okay, we have two more. No, never mind. <laughs> we have zero corruptors left. Broodlord, Ling, Bane, Roach. Ay, ay, ay. Here we go. The carriers do reveal themselves. Three lords are being focused down one after the other. Yeah, and middle VK, he can just push through this. He can just bulldoze past this army. Eva doesn't have what he needs. Base is going to go down, and middle VK, you can just keep on pushing. There we go. No anti-air. GG gets called. And middle VK will take the series 2-1, to one, advancing on to the grand finals. GG. Unfortunately, the carriers were surprised. They were surprised at Eba. He wasn't ready at all. He had zero corruptors. Every single corruptor was morphed into a into a broodlord. Um, didn't have too many queens either. And oh, Middle VK was just able to just yeah push his way through. GG, well played. He, he he is our first player into the grand finals. Our first finalist, well played. Shout out to Eba by the way. Eba, I think um has Eba made it to the finals before? I know Eba has had some deep runs, but he's a little bit in inconsistent when it comes to his signups. He's not um, the most regular player in our tournaments. Regardless, a really good showing. Really good showing by Eba. Um, really good performance. GG. GG. I'm just quickly double checking. Um, 
Okay, Eva, he has never made it to the finals. He's made it to the semifinals once before, only once. So now he's made it twice. There you go. <laughs> For a second time, Eva did make it to the semifinals. So GG, GG, well played. Hope you are satisfied with how you did compete. Um, I know we can you know, talk about like Ancient Cistern and whether or not um, you should have tapped out then and there. Uh, but like regardless, did go all the way to the ace match. Um, did take it to Mindle VK in the end. And with that, we are getting ready for our next semi-finals match. To find out who faces off against Mindle VK in the grand finals, we have Mia Micah versus Nicaract. Oh, let's go.